it is hot it is cold it is festive it is colorful there are great people there is great food and all this is the perfect setup for something big that's brewing this is nissan's big big moment this is nissan 2.0 and ladies and gentlemen let's meet the nissan kicks It is no big secret that the Nissan Kicks and the Renault Captur use the same platform. But what's interesting to note is that they are quite different. The Nissan Kicks in one hand takes a very traditional SUV approach to the whole design concept. It's got a very sharp A angle, whereas Renault Captur has a more European coupe like stance, which is very crossoverish. But that's not only it. The Kicks is in fact longer and taller than the Renault Captur, making it probably the most voluminous vehicle in its space there are some very interesting elements though nissan's v grill here which is there in almost all international models the led headlamps the four skid plates an interesting rear end with those funky tail lamps and my personal favorite are these 17 inch sweet looking alloys The interior is where the Nissan Kicks differentiates itself the most. This is like a Nissan you've never seen earlier. And I mean, let's admit it. Previous Nissans were a little crude, were a little basic, were a little functional, but this one is a whole new Nissan. You get leather cladded dashboard and door trims, a brown and black interior theme for a very upmarket look, and of course this 8-inch floating touchscreen infotainment system gets all the spotlight here, reassuring you that this vehicle is positioned to be premium than the Renault Captur. What's a great car without great features? Now the Kicks gets a lot of them, which other cars as well do. But there's one thing that takes the highlight, which is this. This is the 360 degree camera from Nissan and this basically takes an inputs from four different cameras around the vehicle and gives you a bird's eye view of how exactly your parking situation looks like and that is a big big convenience the rear seat is actually quite quite similar to the Renault Captur especially with that seating angle here but overall it is a very great place to be because there's a lot of knee room there's good amount of headroom there's good amount of shoulder room as well because the car is pretty wide by itself and you even get rear ac vents now coming to a very important part of this whole exercise driving experience you get two engine options so you have a 1.5 liter petrol giving you 105 horsepower and that's made it to a 5 speed manual and there's also the most popular 1.5 liter diesel uh, 108 horsepower which is made it to a 6 speed manual and that's the same unit you would find in the duster the terrano the capture as well now the cool thing is that though the engines are very similar uh, the way you perceive it is completely different because the cars by itself are completely different if you take the kicks for example you have a completely different power to weight ratio you have a different you have probably differences in the gear ratios you have differences in the suspension setup even the steering for that matter so all these things you know come and converge to a point that is essentially giving you a very immersive very engaging driving experience because that's what is missing in most cars you may have a electric power steering and you can still do it but you know it just feels very superficial in most cars whereas the kicks is sort of engaging you it starts starts talking to you it's communicating with you and that is something you just can't put a tangible value on you just can't put uh, a rupee equivalent on because this is completely intangible this is completely you know just the way you feel about the car but what's actually surprising is the way the kicks handles and because when you think about it suv of this proportion 
uh, 210 mm of ground clearance you're going to think a lot of body roll but fortunately that doesn't happen i can do this and still feel under control and you know you can make sure that the car just sticks to the road and that's a good handling vehicle because the suspensions here are you know uh, tuned to a stiffer extent uh, not too stiff where you would complain about it but you should be you know stiffer in comparison and this ensures that the amount of body roll inside the cabin is actually quite under control and therefore giving you a a more positive driving experience and also ensuring that you as a driver do not lose confidence very easily on the other side is the steering wheel so this is the hydraulic slightly old school steering wheel so it's going to be very heavy at slow speeds it is also going to start getting heavy as you climb as you climb so it's it requires some getting used to uh, but the upside of things is that this steering wheel gives you a lot of driving feedback you know and you can you can sort of start feeling how the gravel on the road is for example if i go on the side of the road i would know that the gravel is slightly off and you know it is giving me that feedback it is giving me that sense of uh communication while there are some pretty good positives there are some negatives for starters you know when it comes to steering wheel you cannot adjust the steering wheel for the telescopic configuration you can only do it for tilt and that's a small bummer because most cars even lower low, even in the lower segments give you both tilt as well as a telescopic arrangement and that's not that it's a small bummer and of course you are not likely to get an automatic anytime soon and even if you do get an automatic it's going to be a petrol cvt and i don't think the diesel automatic is anywhere in the picture so that again is going to keep some buyers away and of course a very important thing is that it doesn't have a sunroof while the honda wrv gets it and the hyundai creta which is which it basically competes with gets the sunroof as well this could partly be because those roof rails on top are actually functional and can carry about 100 kilo under 100 100 kilos of uh, weight but even then you know sunroof or a functional roof carrier that's a call to make and of course there is the airbag count because if you compare the Hyundai Creta or even the Ford EcoSport here the top variants give you six airbags but with the kicks just like the Captur you only get four and that is going to be putting some people off because you know gone are the days where you give only two you know you need to give more than two you need to give you need to give four you need to give six the Toyota Yaris in fact gets seven as standard and why not 6 so as nissan found its reincarnation in india with the kicks and does the kicks have all that pedigree that nissan stands for in the global suv market it does it really does but the question to you is does all this matter this this whole package add value to you and thus this whole thing appeal to you in some way or the other and more importantly would you look at the kicks instead of the Hyundai Creta and that's something for you to let us know about have a good day find me in the corner